working my way right along fixing up all that stuff I garbage picked on Sunday night and Monday night in my neighborhood area. So of course that one was the throttle cable which did the choke and the magneto no spark. This one that was all disassembled for some reason really didn't have anything wrong except water in the gas tank, water in the carburetor, water in the combustion chamber and so after getting everything all the water cleared out runs great. This old 86 Quantum only thing wrong was the wheels are totally floppy because it's got crappy adjusters but all I did was dump the old gas out of the car, put fresh gas in, it fired right up. And now we're going to take a look at this old 1979 Simpson Sears Briggs & Stratton. Uh, the only thing I can imagine is it could have a carb choke problem or dirty points or nothing wrong. It came from a very wealthy neighborhood too. And then just two more to go before I get back into all my old stock that I had from last year to work on. Oh yeah, and there's another one of those 4.5 Quantums, which you saw in the video. It had big rust holes in the deck, but all I did was dump the bowl out, had water in it, and added fresh gas, and she runs perfect, so I definitely have some decks waiting for it to go on. So like any old lawnmower, first thing you do is check the oil, and that's quite low. You're supposed to fill all these ones right up till they're at the top. Unless, of course, their cork is halfway up the block. So, first thing I like to check is the carb setup. And what I see is not good. This is chokematic, and that thing should always be closing itself, not opening itself. So, that may be the problem. Next thing is governor spring tension, and that's way too loose. And I don't know what that thing's doing there. So we definitely could have a carb problem, so let's take off the gas tank and check the diaphragm, but it's probably bad. Check the plug. It's good. Now since this has points of condenser ignition, I'm gonna have to check the spark. Alright. And a spark. So Obviously she's not going to start. Choke is staying wide open and no spark, so at least you'll get to learn something. So every time you take the cover off, look at all the crap in there. You blow out the crap. Well, first step, take off the screen, then feel that your ratchet shaft isn't seizing up. That feels good, although I always oil them anyways and I reassemble. Now there's two ways to get this screw nut off, or the ratchet off. One is this way, you put the open end of a wrench against one of those screw humps, hold it against it, not straight on, but at a bit of an angle, and hit this hard with a hammer in the direction it unscrews like that. You have to hit it really hard, and you put one feet on the flywheel blades on the opposite side to stop it from rotating, and it'll unscrew itself. To put it back on, you just put the wrench on the bump the other way, and hit it really hard. The harder you put it on, the better, because if it's not on really tight, it, the flywheel key breaks as soon as you're trying to start it. But I'll do it the easy way. I was a crafty kid when I was a teenager, so I got the back plate off a big old speaker that held the magnet, four car wheel nuts, welded them on, piece of pipe, and a socket. And that just drops right on those bumps just like that. And in the wink of an eye, she's off. And that works great for putting it back on again. Now, just before you do reassemble everything, put some oil in that hole. There's a little sock in the bottom or pad to a felt that absorbs the oil. Don't use engine oil. Use either automatic transmission oil or a light machine oil for electric motors. And if this shaft does not look in good condition, sand it first. If you do take apart this thing, never put grease or oil in where the ball bearings are. That causes them to stick and then it doesn't catch when you're pulling on it. Now to get the flywheel off and there's two ways to do that too. 
Well, one way is just to put a big pry bar underneath a safe spot, push down hard, and hit that with a hammer at the same time. Well, you may dent the top of it and your ratchet may not go back on, so you'll have to get a grinder or a file and fix it up a little bit afterwards, but that doesn't matter. Or, the wink of an eye method, put your pry bar there, put one foot on it while stepping on it, put this on and go brrr, and it pops right off. We'll take the easy method again, of course. With the wink of an eye, there you go. And the flywheel key is good. Now just remove that cover. And there's the good stuff. The orange and brown and yellow sandpaper doesn't work very well on points. Points have a thin layer of platinum on them and they're very hard so they last a long time. This stuff has got a lot harder grit so cut your points much better. And don't touch the part of the sandpaper with your fingers where you're going to be rubbing it on the points because that will contaminate them. So fold over a little piece and shove it in the point and start sanding. And do this for quite a while in all directions and then rub everything up and down and just keep doing it. Just never touch the point surface. If this still doesn't have spark after this. The condenser can be bad and very rarely the magneto could be bad. After you're done sanding, give the gap a blow while it's open. Then rotate it till they close. Push so they get closed nice and hard and rub them back together and that kind of makes them make a good connection. Then open them again. Blow again. Rub one more time. One more blow. And you must assume that they're clean now and it probably will be fine the cover back on. Now if you do have lawnmowers for parts from more modern units from 1982 and newer, this being a 79 unfortunately, you may have some spare leftover magnetron magnetos, the electronic ones. Well they don't use anything under the flywheel. All they have is one wire that goes over here to the kill switch. So if you want to use one of those you just snip off the wires that go here, forget about them, hook up the one wire that went to the kill switch to your more modern magneto and you converted your lawnmower to electronic ignition without ever having to take off the flywheel just by changing two screws and you set your magneto as close as you can to the flywheel without touching and that's the correct distance. Don't forget to put the key back in and some people sand the magnets because they're all rusty. It doesn't make any difference how much rust is on those magnets. It functions exactly the same in the same power of spark. And don't forget your oil. The washer, and the washer goes on with the highest point pointing up because it's slightly conical shape. Start those threads. Now put it on with your homemade tool or your wrench and hammer. Nice and tight. Oops, wrong way. That's good. And where the position of the three magnets are, by quickly rocking it back and forth while it's turned on, I can see that I've got spark, so we're all set. Now to fix this bastardized governor mechanism and fix the carburetor. Well, they have that little carb linkage buggered up, so I'll have to replace that. <laughs> they sort of used wire to compensate. And I'll get rid of that wire and put her back to stock. Well, I found a good condition little link. And spring's not that great, but you can always shorten them if you're not running fast enough. Just snip a little bit off the end and bend it over and make a new loop. Now to see if this carb is savable. Huh, no wonder. Doesn't even have a spring inside. That's a first. Someone's obviously worked on this and didn't have a clue what they were doing. Maybe even the diaphragm is good, who knows. Whenever you're doing this job, always make sure there's no gas and water in there. 
and that your spring is actually attached to the little gripper right there then it just sits in the hole and when you reassemble it make sure your spring doesn't go sideways and get munched. You can buy new di diaphragm kits if necessary they cost about four dollars. I think this time I'll just steal the spring and put it on and see what's going to happen. Make sure there's no water and crap in your gas tank before you put it all back together too. Now always fill your gas tank on your Briggs that's underneath the carb more than half full to make them easy starting and then the Next thing is, if you're testing it like I am, always have to have the screw in the carb so gas doesn't come out, out of that hole where it screws in and so it gets the proper choke. And you always tip them back one time to prime them for a couple seconds and they'll start in one pull if everything's good. Let's see. I have no idea if the carb's adjusted right. carb isn't adjusted right but if it's choke opens quickly after you start it you know she's a good probably working carburetor you know she's a good working carburetor now the fact that it started and died just means I have to open the mixture screw a little bit that's in that direction I'll try giving it three-eighths of a turn right now now when you're adjusting the mixture to get it finally right on these old carburetors you set them to full speed and you turn out the screw until it starts chugging and puffing black smoke then you slowly turn it back in to make it leaner and just to make it run the fastest as soon as it starts running the fastest then just back the screw out a tiny bit like an eighth of a turn and that's probably the right setting so it'll always run good have no bog in the long grass and no problem starting and dying